happens. This lesson is about treatment and management of various surgical conditions in animals like inflammation, wound, abscess, cyst, tumor, hernia, hematoma, hemorrhage, sinus, fistula, necrosis and gangrene, burn, sprain and tendinitis. Here we have restricted only about treatment aspect and management aspect of the condition. The first class we will see about treatment and management of inflammation and wound. Inflammation. What is inflammation? Inflammation is the purposeful reaction of living tissue to an irritant. What are the cardinal signs of inflammation? Can you define one? Yes. Rhubarb is redness. Kalar is temperature. Dolar pain. Tumor swelling and egg functionalasia affection of function of the particular part. Your treatment should include or to subside these inflammatory signs. You should keep in mind that your treatment should aim for the reduction of these cardinal signs. There are general principles of treatment for inflammation. First, the cause of the inflammation should be removed and in case of acute inflammation, you can use cold and astringent application to suppress inflammatory exudate. For that, you can use cold water, ice or white lotion. Application of pressure bandage also reduces the inflammatory process by compression. In chronic inflammation, warm application induce proper circulation and to favor for reabsorption of exudates. For warm application, the best method is fermentation. It is given in two forms, dry heat and moist heat. For dry heat fermentation, you can use heated bran or sand. For moist heat application, you can use cloth dipped in hot water. Here, the moist heat is more soothing than dry heat. In case of pain, application of local analgesic preparations are useful. Scarification of blood tissue induces bleeding, thereby it favors for the healing. Antiseptic and antibiotic therapy can be used for septic inflammation. Treatment and management for acute inflammation. Acute inflammation means the inflammation which occurs immediately after an injury. First, the cause of the inflammation should be removed if it is possible. Then immediately after an injury you apply cold and astringent application at 15 degrees Celsius that is 60 degree Fahrenheit which reduces inflammatory exudation. This cold constricts the blood vessels and reduces the blood flow to the area. Example cold compression cold water irrigation, cold bath or ice application. Here also warm applications are useful at 40 to 45 degrees Celsius in severe inflammatory condition where in which the tissue are likely to undergo gangrenous changes. Warmthness promotes circulation, rest restores blood supply to the tissues and prevents gangrene and ultimately resulting in relief of tension and pain. Examples of warmth applications are warm water compression, fermentation, warm water bath, heated sand, bran or salt. Application of anodyne preparations containing local analgesics are very useful 
for superficial and painful lesions. Scarification with strict antiseptic precautions should be done for severe inflammatory congestion to relieve tension and pain. Septic inflammatory lesions of food needs antiseptic food bath. It is given for 30 minutes at a time and about 2 to 3 times in a day. Massage for 5 to 10 minutes at a time allows absorption of exudates due to fluid dispersion and reduces pain. Compression with bandage following cotton padding produces slight pressure and helps in absorption of exudates. Treatment for subacute and chronic inflammation. Number 1. Application of moist heat. Number 2. Massage and compression bandage. Number 3. Counter irritation. This counter irritation will convert the chronic inflammation into acute one which in turn may result in resolution of inflammation. The counter irritation is produced by number 1. Rupifacient. It is used for slight subacute inflammation. Examples of rubifacients are renamed saponins, renamed ammoniated camphor, renamed teribenthine. Blisters. It is also a counter irritant used for chronic inflammation. Example, bin added of mercury in Vaseline. Pustulence, firing, cartridgeation or actual cartridge are also induces counter irritation. non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs also helps in reducing the pain and fever from the inflammation. Nowadays, a recombinant DNA and monoclonal antibody technology have developed some recent therapies that are being enlisted in the battle against the damaging inflammation. Example, recombinant protein C and infliximab. Now we will move on to the treatment and management of wounds. What is a wound? Wound is defined as disruption in the continuity of soft tissue. There are so many classifications in wound, but the major classification is Contusion, bruise, hematoma and open wounds. Again the open wounds are classified under various categories like abrasion, laceration, punctured wound, penetrated wound, avulsion wound like that. Our aim of treatment should be to induce healing process in the wound. For example, contusion. This contusion are treated with cold and astringent application to minimize extra vaccinations. What is contusion? Contusion is the rupture of capillaries underneath the skins. It forms contusion. So this application of cold and astringent application will minimize extra vaccination. Hematoma. Hematoma is the collection of blood in an abnormal cavity. When a hematoma is on outside the body surface, when it is small, it gets absorbed without any treatment. Otherwise, you have to wait for the hematoma to ripen due to infection and open it and treat it with the treatment management as open wound. The open wounds. The open wounds, again, they are classified into, majorly classified into surgical or aseptic wound, contaminated and septic wounds or infected wounds. First we will see about treatment of septic, that is aseptic surgical wounds. The surgical wounds are always aseptic because it is done utmost precautions that 
there is no invasion of organisms to the surgical site. The surgeon should avoid drying of tissue, excessive trauma and hemorrhage to reduce the wound infection. Before surgery, prophylaxis against tetanus should be done in all the animals. And suppose in case of any dead space or if the surgeons think that there will be collection of fluid or hematoma formation occurs, the drainage should be given or it should be provided for complete drainage and better healing. The sutures should be left in place at least for 8 to 14 days. Also, antibiotics and prophylactic measures should be taken before and after any surgery. In case of control of flies, fly repellent ailments, that too in summer season, fly repellent ailments are most helpful to control the infection due to flies. Also, this is important that the surgical part should be kept at rest or it should be immobilized with proper bandages for the better healing. Treatment of contaminated or septic wound. What is contaminated wound or septic wound? If the wound is invaded by the microorganisms and if it is multiplying, all the wounds are called as septic wounds. Otherwise, the fresh wounds gets contaminated when it is more than 4 to 5 hours old. The management of septic wounds should be directed towards overcoming factors like type and number of invading microorganisms, type and locus, location of wound, poor blood supply at the wound site, effectiveness of treatment, presence of foreign material, dead tissue on the wound. The general principle of treatment for the septic wounds are first you have to control the hemorrhage. The bleeding is controlled by application of hemostatic measures especially ligating the vessels like that. Suppose if the wound is in the extremities or periphery, it should be thoroughly flushed and cleaned with warm normal saline or warm water or soap or 2% hydrogen peroxide or 5% detol or 0.5% potassium permanganate. The hairs around the wound side should be clipped and shaved. The wound and surrounding areas should be irrigated or flushed with mild non-irritant antiseptic lotions. The lotions which are used for this purpose are 1 in 1000 perchloride of mercuric lotion, 1 in 500 acriflavin lotion, 1 is to 40 usual lotion. You should know that usual is bleaching powder plus boric acid and 5 to 10% hypotonic saline. The fresh wound should be sutured and the septic wound or the wounds deeply penetrated should not be sutured. Warm antiseptic bath, foot bath with 10% formalin should be given for contaminated and infected wounds at the feet. Debridement for removal of devastalized or necrosed tissue should be done either by excising the dead tissues and unhealthy tissues or by application of medicaments like 2.5% sodium chloride solution or magnesium sulfate glycerin paste. After irrigation and debridement, the wound should be covered with moist antiseptic pad or antiseptic powder or ointment. The antiseptic powders 
which are useful are boric acid powder, eupod powder and bib ointment. The ointments used for the treatment of septic wound are boric acid ointment, streptomycin ointment, chloromycin ointment, penicillin ointment, teramycin ointments. The antiseptic that is very strong antiseptic should not be used on the wound because it destroys the granulation tissue. Provision of drainage. If there is any discharge from the wound, drainage must be provided. The wounds with drainage should not be sutured. For deep wounds, fenestrated tube or drainage sheet can be inserted inside and is fixed for drainage. Deep wounds with narrow external opening should be enlarged for efficient drainage. A counter opening can be given in a dependent part and sheet on may be passed for the drainage. Immobilization of the wound. For any septic wound that is present in the or near the joints should be immobilized by protective bandages. If proper immobilization is not provided, healing will be delayed and formation of excess granulation tissue may result. For excess granulation of tissue that is proud flush, application of caustics like crystals of copper sulphate or potassium permanganate can be useful. Here I have listed some of the salient points for wound debridement. The animal should be positioned well by proper restraining with sedation or general anesthesia. The previously applied bandages or splints should be removed before the wound debridement. The hairs around the wound should be shaved and clipped. Before shaving, the wound should be covered with proper covering. After shaving, remove the covering and place a rubricant jelly over the wound and save the hairs around the edges of the wound. Wash away the interrupted hair and jelly by flushing with lotion. Then the wound should be scrubbed thoroughly with antiseptic scrubbing. If a small deep penetrating wound is there, probe the wound with a sterile hemostat. Flush the wound with physiological saline and excise the excess granulation tissues. Before are doing debridement, the irrigation should be continued with warm saline, saline solution. Don't remove any bone fragments that are firmly attached to the soft tissues. And do the primary repair of tendons and nerves if warrants.